Hello, I'm Dr. Benita Rattan. I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So today's video is all about vitamin A. So vitamin A can be quite confusing because there are so many different names for them. Um, and actually the way we use vitamin A for skin of color is different to how we should be using vitamin A for Caucasian skin. The reason is skin of color have larger melanocytes. They are easier to trigger. As I always say, one scratch, one bite or one burn and we hyperpigment. This means we cannot afford to irritate the skin. And different forms of vitamin A have different irritancy profiles and also different efficacy profiles. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what is vitamin A? What are the different forms of them? Um, how to use them step by step, what percentages to be looking for, mistakes made with vitamin A, and then my favorite vitamin A products for skin of color. As you know, none of my videos have ever been sponsored. They will never be sponsored. This is our video library specifically for skin of color that's used, should be used as a reference library for us and for our children so you know where to spend your money and what to avoid. So vitamin A is considered royalty when it comes to anti-aging and skincare. Three things happen with age. We get hyperpigmentation with age, we get skin laxity, and we get wrinkles. These are the main skincare issues for skin of color, specifically as we age. Pigmentation is not a big issue for Caucasian skin as they age. Before I carry on, let me quickly let you know that I am in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video. So make sure you subscribe and you hit that notification bell so you know I'm here to answer your questions. I also answer a lot of your questions on Instagram. I've got two accounts, Skincare by Dr. B and Dr. Nita Rattan. I'm also on TikTok, Dr. Nita Rattan too. We have a private Facebook group of which is a safe space to talk about your skincare. It's a forum called Dr. V Sock Family and you can upload your photos, you can ask each other questions. There are thousands of us in this group from all over the world so it's really helpful when it comes to product recommendations. Um, so please do join that if you are um, enthusiastic about the skincare. All right, so uh, let's carry on. Okay, so first of all, what's happening with the skin? There's a reduction in fibroblasts. Those are the cells that produce collagen. And it's one of the reasons I basically drink my eight grams of marine collagen every day. <laughs> I make this uh, drink for myself. I will be making it for you too. It'll be called Collagen Boost and it'll be available on our website. But collagen reduces with age. We lose 1% collagen every year from 21 years old onwards. I actually can't wait to get your opinion on the flavor. So this is oh, so delicious. This is coconut and watermelon flavor. And it's actually really hard to make marine collagen tastes good because it's basically fish. Marine collagen comes from the skin of fish, but this is delicious and I can't wait to get your opinion on it. <laughs> With age as well, UV is hitting the skin, leading to free radicals, which damages collagen too, which is why you need your SPF 50, which is why I'm wearing this and I wear it every single day, the uh, Dr. V Unsinkable Mineral SPF 50. So this has no white cast and it's been made for skin of color and it protects you from UVA and UVB rays. So don't forget, the SPF 50 only tells you what protection you're getting from UVB. You need to see how much PA rating there is. So you wanna go for four pluses, which is what we have in Inzincable to give you full UVA protection. That UVA leads to aging. With age, you also have more non-functional elastin being produced, so you don't get that bounce back. Um, it doesn't snap back as quick as it used to. With age, there's also an overproduction of melanin, and this is what leads to melasma and dull skin. With age, there's also more inflammation in the skin, which can lead to telangiectasia, which basically means broken capillaries, which is why with age you can see those um, almost like red streaks that happen um, on the cheekbone area. So how does vitamin A help with all of this? So number one, it stimulates collagen production. That is the number one key that we need. We want to be taking it, we want to be putting it topically on the skin. Vitamin A also increases cell turnover. So this means that there's less time for skin cells that are near the melanocyte where melanin goes from the melanocyte to the skin cells around it. It comes to the surface faster. So there's less time for melanin to go from the melanocyte to the surrounding skin cells. And so when that skin is on a conveyor belt up to the surface, you see less hyperpigmentation too. 
Vitamin A also helps to normalize sebaceous glands, which is why we tend to see it being used in acne so much as well. Now, there are different forms of vitamin A. So starting off with retinol palmitate, for example, which is the weakest form of vitamin A, but the least irritating and the one I don't mind you wearing daily, which is the reason why I put it into our daily range antioxidant serum. Then the next one along is retinol. Retinol is the most popular, is the one that's most well known. Um, is more effective than retinol palmitate, but it's more irritating and you may not want to apply it daily. It might be something that you apply two or three times a week. And I tend to recommend 0.5% max for retinol. The next one is retinaldehyde. This is truly my favorite vitamin A. It's 11 times as effective as retinol. There's zero irritation with it, but it's very expensive. So I have asked you guys in a number of videos now to make, should I make a new formula for the, um, antioxidant power serum with retinaldehyde in it, but it's gonna be more expensive than this product is right now, but it is more effective. The reason why you don't see retinaldehyde, honestly, in a lot of over-the-counter products is because it's that expensive. And so manufacturers don't know whether it's worth taking that risk or not. I'm lucky because I get to ask you all. <laughs> so I get feedback immediately and I always do whatever you tell me to do. So um, a lot of you have asked me to do a new version of the antioxidant power serum, which I'm now working on with retinaldehyde in it. And it is amazing. Um, hopefully later on in the year, we'll be able to release that one for you too. Moving on uh, one, a step further down the pathway is retinoic acid, which is the most irritating form of vitamin A, um, but it's the most powerful and you need a prescription for it. So retinaldehyde is, imagine, one step removed from a prescription vitamin A uh, with zero irritation. So it is truly amazing. I've also put retinaldehyde into our body oil, our body brightening oil, which I will be releasing later on in the year. That'll be for stretch marks, for saggy skin, which does happen after pregnancy. So I can't wait to release that for you too. So the classic mistakes made with vitamin A. Vitamin A is very unstable. So really you do want it in airless packaging, which is why for this, the antioxidant power serum, we had to put in airless packaging. Even with the body oil, I've done the same thing. But as soon as it goes, you go out into daylight, your vitamin A stops working. So it's okay to wear it, um, but it's just not going to be effective. That's why it's better to wear it at nighttime. So packaging is essential. Formulation is also important based on your skin type. So for example, if you have oily skin, then you really you want your vitamin A to be in a gel form or a light form or serum form. If you have normal skin, then you might want it as a cream or a serum. And if you have dry skin, then you're gonna want it with a lot of humectants in a thicker ointment. Now with retinol, you need your skin to become accustomed to it, to become used to it. So I would start with one night a week, then slowly up it to two nights a week, then to three nights a week. I personally wouldn't recommend retinol every single night. It can be too much. And if you think about who I'm talking to, I'm talking to many of us with skin of color and I don't want to cause any irritation or inflammation. So I am always gonna err on the side of caution. You must, must always wear your SPF 50 the next day. This really is key because imagine you've increased cell turnover, you've got new juicy young cells come to the surface. You must protect it with your, I prefer mineral SPF 50. Mineral means it's got zinc in it, which is anti-inflammatory, which is what we need if you're gonna be applying retinol to the skin. Also, please never use vitamin A when you're pregnant or breastfeeding. It's not that we can do clinical studies on which vitamin A is okay. Okay, you know, it might be okay to use retinol palmitate, but we'll never have a clinical study on retinol palmitate for pregnancy. So for example, even this serum has got retinol palmitate in it, and I would never tell you to wear this when you're pregnant or if you're breastfeeding. So bio oil, for example, which has got retinol palmitate in it, I just wouldn't recommend it during pregnancy, even though that's what people you know, think they should be doing. I'd rather you used a simple emollient like almond oil, uh, with vitamin E in it rather than something with vitamin A in it during pregnancy. Now I'm gonna go through how do you choose and use your vitamin A. So first thing is you want to use it at nighttime. So first we double cleanse. So you use your oil um, cleanser first, to remove any sunscreen and makeup, followed by your micellar gel wash. So these are the ones that I use. This is um, the Dr. Mita Rattan oil melting cleanser followed by the micellar gel wash, but use whichever one you want. Followed by your hydrating toner. Um, there's a very good one done by Hada Labo. And this is the one that we use, that I use. It's got niacinamide in it um, to strengthen my skin barrier. 
Now, if you want to use a vitamin A daily, then I'd recommend either retinol palmitate or retinaldehyde, so the non-irritating ones. If you're doing either of those, you can go directly after your toner in with your retinol palmitate. So a couple that obviously I like. So um, I like our antioxidant power serum. I also like Paula's Choice has got a very good anti-aging um, antioxidant serum too with retinol palmitate in it. I'm happy for you to apply either of those directly on top of your toner. However, if you want to go for a retinol, then I would tell you to use a fatty moisturizer first, then your retinol, then another fatty moisturizer on top. So the sandwich method, because you don't want to cause any irritation. So um, with in terms of fatty moisturizers, I love Cetraban. So this is Cetraban here. I also love CeraVe. Oh, so this is what a fatty moisturizer looks like. It really, it's not like a lotion. It means that it's got higher fat content in it, which means that you have longer lasting uh, moisturization. So with our CeraPep Brightening Moisturizer, for example, it's got your ceramides in it, peptides in it, licorice root extract, so it's good for pigmentation and niacinamide too. Again, another fatty moisturizer. So look for a fatty moisturizer when you want to use retinol. So my favorite uh, Dr. V approved products for retinol would be 0.5% retinol from The Ordinary. I also like 0.3% Paula's Choice plus 2% Bacuchiol. And I also like retinol complex from Notorium because it's encapsulated, which means it's non-irritating. Don't forget your skin is a waxy layer and really anything that's encapsulated, you get much better um, penetration and delivery of actives. Um, things that are water-based tend to sit on the surface more. In terms of retinoids, uh, the best ones, uh, I like 2% Gran Active Retinoid from Be Minimalist if you live in India, or 2 or 5% Gran Active Retinoid from The Ordinary if you have access to The Ordinary. After retinol, um, you can then apply any other non-irritating ingredient on top. I wouldn't recommend, for example, you exfoliate and then apply your retinol. In fact, I've done a whole video on what not to combine with retinol in a completely separate video. But with retinol, it is one of those solo hero ingredients um, that does so many different things that you probably don't need to apply much else on top of it. So I do tend to say stick with your fatty moisturizer on top. Um, and see how your skin responds. You may have some irritation, you may have some purging. Now the difference between purging and a reaction is purging basically means that there's an increased cell turnover and anything that's in the skin, any clogged pores comes to the surface faster. Now one cell cycle is approximately four to six weeks depending on your age and so if you are having this reaction taking place for longer than six weeks, it's likely that it's not purging, you're having a reaction. And that's how you can tell the difference. Your AM routine the day after you've used your retinol is to wash your face with your micellar gel wash, apply your fatty moisturizer, and then your mineral SPF 50 really is essential. If you want to learn more about skincare for skin of color, please do get your hands on this Skin Revolution. It's a book I've written and published by HarperCollins. The link is down below. You can get it from Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Waterstones, so it's available globally. Um, and it really is my love letter to my global skin of color family. So I hope you love it. I hope your whole family loves it um, because even our, my children, so Sienna, for example, can read this book. So hopefully it's easy and Hopefully it'll help our children understand their skin better than we did growing up and so won't really have the same problems that we had. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the comments section. Take care. Bye.